given your message is so 180 of the current paradigm when it comes to cancer, what kind of pushback do you get? Or given your credentials and how long you've been in this world, are you pretty immune to that? Um, no, I don't think anybody can be immune to it. The 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 frustration is when you see papers that are published um, that uh, say that cancer uses oxidative phosphorylation based on oxygen consumption studies. Um, a lot of times that they they don't cite what you've already done, uh, and you know that gets you everybody. You, know, you do a lot of work, and, and then some guy comes out and says, "Oh, no, I did it." No, I, I we 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 published that before you did. <laughs> but but um, no, I know it's a hard thing, but you know. Um, it's exciting. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like a big basketball football game. The excitement is in the game. Yes, if the outcome comes out the way you'd like it to be, then you can revel in the success. But it's actually playing the game. It's actually the process of moving a field in a different direction. Yes, it's not easy. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. But um, I'm waiting for someone to present hard evidence to me showing that some kind of a cancer cell can thrive and live well in gluco without glucose and glutamine, okay, then I would be uh, shaken uh, or I would have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out uh, what went on with this. Why, why did we not understand this? And so far, we have not found that. After, after excruciating studies in depth, we, we can't find that. So that says that perhaps we might be correct. And if we are correct, then the paradigm must change. At some point, it has to change. Otherwise, people are going to continue to suffer and die in very excruciating ways, almost medieval-like, uh, which is tragic. I, I find that to be absolutely tragic. And, um, and, and if you know you can possibly make that less stressful, less painful, more therapeutically effective, then, you, then I'm going to do whatever I can to, to see it through. I mean, what am I going to do? Go back and plant tomatoes in my garden, you know? I mean, uh, maybe maybe so, but, but I prefer to, to challenge this whole system. Prove me wrong. Come on, tell me. Why do you think I'm wrong? Come on, show me, show me the data. <laughs> well, it's obvious anybody tuning in, listening or watching this, the passion you have for this subject and, and your intensity wanting to continue to do the work you do. But as somebody who is in their late 70s, how much longer do you think you can do this work? Oh, well, as long as I can breathe, um, as long as I can get my ass into the lab and direct the experiments, I'll do it, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, if I have to wheelchair my ass in here, I'll do it. Uh, uh, the, the, I'm not going anywhere. So um, uh, I'll do it as long as I can. Let's put it that way. And uh, uh, the nice thing about the university here is that if the students enjoy the classes that you teach and you bring the students up to a new level and the current papers are, are, are you're allowing them to read and hear about the most recent research and they get excited about it. So then that's the benefit because that's my job. My job is a college professor and I bring to the students the latest research on these topics and I have them read the original papers and use their own knowledge base to compare and contrast what the paper is saying and what the, some of the research that doesn't agree with what that paper is showing so that they can see that there is a considerable amount of controversy because a lot of kids, all they do is memorize stuff out of a textbook and they think what's in that textbook is what they memorize and they have to do tests. On. And I tell them a lot of that stuff in these textbooks, they're way behind the time. They're not up to date. They're still telling you stuff that we've already disproved. And yet you're memorizing stuff from a textbook that's no longer correct. So it opens the mind of the kids and say, hey, listen, everything in the textbook may not be correct. So, um, so as long as I can continue to do that and I do it and as most of the students really enjoy it, um, and then I published, we've got a tremendous research staff, the best, the best. I've got the best people working with me, smart, conscientious, hardworking, and they're, uh, they're learning. And some of them are MDs and some of these guys want to go out and they want to start these clinics and they want to treat these patients because they're going to know how to do it. And they, they, they're excited about this because they know it's right. And I tell them, do an experiment to see if we're wrong. And they work really hard and they can't disprove it. So they know, damn, this has got to be, I gotta, we got to work harder on this. So um, that's where it is. And it's exciting, Jesse. Um, you know, and I'm very thankful for the philanthropy people. Uh, there are some people who feel that they want to make a stake in something big. And uh, they don't really care whether they're going to make money on it. 
but they just want to know they're part of a process that's starting to change the system. And when we publish papers, uh, we acknowledge in the acknowledgement section of these papers all the folks that have supported our research, and they like that. So if, if someone gives me $100,000 to do some research and I publish a paper where that money was helping us collect new data, I put the name of that person or that uh, foundation as a supporter of our work. So they can hold it up to their friends and colleagues and say, I am helping this process. Look at me. I supported some of this research. And they get excited about that because they're not able to go into my lab and do these kinds of experiments themselves. But they understand that the outcome of these experiments could be profound in the way we in the way we change and help people live longer and healthier. And some folks want to be part of that. And I'm happy to have them part of that because I'll, my, my list of acknowledgments for success is growing, <laughs> is growing. And I'm waiting for the day that I can have a list of supporters as long as the abstract in the paper. <laughs> I just we keep our fingers crossed on that one, but it, it's going to happen. I'm not going anywhere. So, um, and we're going to do everything we can to help these folks and, 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 and just keep plugging away at it. And your podcast maybe will help her and uh, spread the word and, and uh, things will, things will change. Things will change. Well, I know we got to go, but we'll end on this. We're going to end on a hypothetical situation years from now, after you continue to do the work you're doing with new breakthroughs and, you're retired at this point. You're planting. No, we don't your, retire. Jerry. Well, no. Well, hey, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, hey, hypothetical no. here. I was going to say you're planting your tomato plants. You're looking back at the work you did all these years. What to you, when you get to that point, looking at all your work and what of what has come of it, what is success to you? Well, I I would say success is the knowledge that we were able to keep people healthier and alive for longer than they would have been. Uh, every person that's living longer, I feel good about. Okay. Uh, if I know someone had a stage four tumor or, or terminal, I hate the term, they have terminal cancer and these guys are living like, like years longer than they were supposed to be. That's success. Success is seeing somebody alive that should have been dead according to the, the system. So I consider every one of those cases is success. And that's what, that's what motivates me, to be honest with you. When I see a little kid that uh, uh, had a terrible brain tumor and he's now going to college at some point in his future, that's success. You know, um, uh, you know a, a woman who, who has three kids, single mom, and she gets a terminal cancer and, and she's like all freaked out. And now, now she's living 10 years later and she shouldn't have been that, because she did metabolic therapy. That's success. So what, what, uh, I mean, the university, I, I have, I, I do well here at the university, but I think success is seeing folks, uh, enjoy their life, have an opportunity to live a little bit longer, uh, without, without crippling, uh, adverse effects, uh, living quality of life, overall survival quality. That's success, right? To say, oh, I can cure. I didn't say ever we can cure cancer. All I know is, can we manage it better than what we're pre pre presently doing? And the answer is, I think we can for sure, and that's success. So when that becomes standard, then what? What the hell more do you want? I mean, right, right, right. I mean let's give. Forget about the tomatoes in the garden. If I'm there, then you know we have a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. And I have the science to say what you should do, but it's up to you to do to determine whether or not you want to do that. The body will turn on the tumor and dissolve it and eat it together with the diet drug combination.